Hi, I'm Kelly Moulton, Superintendent Galveston ISD. Thanks for joining me in learning about Galveston Bond 2018. The Galveston ISD Board of Trustees has called a bond election on May 5th, 2018. For your information, the last successful bond for GISD was passed back in 2003. We are looking at bond 2018 to address some items that were first developed by our Citizens Advisory Committee. In order to move forward in Galveston and Bolivar communities, we're asking for support for the children of GISD and their educational experiences. 49 members of our community came together to identify, discuss, and prioritize the needs for the district. This was a great group to work with, but they went through all of the group dynamics that we know about. They formed on day one. They were nice and pleasant. They shook hands. They enjoyed getting to meet each other. In meeting number two, they stormed. That means that they came together with very unique perspectives that they wanted to get their point across. And then the third meeting, we had the norm. So we went from form to storm to norm. And the idea that once they sent staff back to bring some more information, they identified a $31 million price tag for a bond election moving forward in 2018. Now, I can share with you that that first meeting, we actually took to them a project of $92 million. We actually moved that to $31 million through the process of working with community. They understood that there are needs, but we also needed to work on a comprehensive package for the school district. Let me share with you the one comment that we utilized over and over again. It was more or less our rally cry, and it was, we cannot go big until we go right. What we're affectionately calling the Galveston two-step is two bond elections in one comprehensive package that we can share with our community. We know that in order to go big, we have to go right first. And step one is the going right. It's an opportunity for us to provide for all GIS facilities so that they can safely serve the students and staff over the next five years. By attending to safety, to the immediate needs, to technology, to transportation for a five-year period, this is our opportunity to go right. So going big is step two. We want our GISD facilities to be reflective of the exceptional kids and programs that we offer here in GISD. But we know it's going to take a real effort to identify where our efficiencies and our effectiveness lie. So we've got to have some time to get more resources. We need to do a demographic study. We need to look at a comprehensive facility study. We need to continue to utilize our strategic plan facilities committee and our citizens advisory committee to give us information so that we can go big. Step one, let's go right. Let's prepare our facilities to make great decisions for the future. Step two, let's go big. Let's identify those things that we need for the citizens of Galveston, for the children of Galveston, so they can continue to be competitive in our global society. So this is kind of like a synopsis or a distillation of where we are now. We know we need to address safety and security for our students and staff. We need to address technology and transportation needs. Our students need to be able to continue to grow through the use of technology and we need to be able to safely transport our students not only to and from school but those amazing experiences that we provide for them through extracurricular activities and traveling off the island. We also know that we need to address immediate needs. The idea that we can put all of our facilities in a position so that they can serve our current students and staff for a five-year period as we plan for step two. We also know that we need to be efficient. Part of this election is to use monies that are for debt only, and those are capital projects. If we can address some of our capital projects, we can recover some efficiencies on our general operating budget each day. For example, if we can seal our windows, we're going to have lower utility costs 
and that will be an efficient use of these funds that we can recognize on our maintenance and operation side. And then finally, as I've mentioned before, we need to build sustainability. We need to have that five-year period, that window where we are serving our current students well and with pride so that we can plan for an amazing future. The considerations as we move forward are really important for us. We need to continue to engage our community, our facilities planning committee through the strategic plan, our citizens advisory committee, are all groups that will help inform staff as we move forward in step two. It's also critical that we pay attention to the students we have now. We wanna make sure that we're taking care of the facilities and their needs for the students that we have over these next five years as we prepare for what our future might be. We also know that if we come to our community and ask for bond money right now, we need to have visible results. You need to see as a community that we are being held to our word, that we are taking care of those projects that we said we would, and that includes taking care of the safety and security of our students in an immediate way. We also recognize that we're asking for two parts and part two may go a different direction in the utilization of a particular building or facility. That means that we need to make wise choices now. We need to choose projects that are portable over time if they need to be. An example of this would be safety and security cameras. They can be moved from one building to another as needed. So we're not going to outfit a building and then ask for our voters to do something different in a couple of years. We want to make sure again that all of our facilities are ready for five years and where things are portable and where things are more efficient. We have that opportunity and we think with the future in mind. As you can see from this graphic, all campuses and many student activities are incorporated. In fact, every student will enjoy the benefits of Bond 2018. The Citizens Advisory Committee and your school board have chosen the amount of $31 million to move forward. This will help with our immediate needs for a five-year sustainable period. Please allow me to take just a few moments to explain a little bit about school finance. We set a tax rate for our taxpayers that includes a maintenance and operations tax and an INS or interest and in sinking tax. Maintenance and operations are those funds that we use over the year. They provide for teacher pay, staff pay, classroom supplies and materials, utilities, the use of gasoline to transport our students. Those expenses that we have ongoing over a year are on our maintenance and operations side. But we also have interest in sinking, and that's to service our debt. That's to take care of the opportunity that we've given to our community to say, yes, we're going to take out, in essence, a loan in order to do some big capital projects and then pay that back. Interest and in sinking taxes are only for the repayment of debt. So we're talking here in a bond about looking at our INS. We are in a very fortunate position in Galveston ISD that we're bringing this $31 million package to our voters with no increase in our tax rate. This is an opportunity to continue with the tax rate as it is, and I'll show you in just a moment how low it is in relation to the rest of the, the county. But I do want to make sure that you understand we are looking at capital improvement projects, not teacher pay at this time. That's not to say that it's not important to us because I'll talk to you about that in the next slide. The INS tax that we're asking for is with no tax rate increase. It is for $31 million and it is for a payout of 13 years. Now Galveston ISD, as I mentioned before, had a successful bond election in 2003. We still have debt that we're paying on for that bond election, but we did a great job over the last 10 years of structuring that debt so that our payments next year actually go down. So what we're able to do is to take the reduction in payment from previous debt if bond 2018 passes, our payments slide into those savings we had and we're able to provide this additional funding with no tax rate increase. 
It's also important for me to mention at this point that any INS tax collection comes to us with no recapture. Galveston ISD is fortunate that we have a great tax base, but the way that the state truck structures our payments includes that we have to provide recapture, some of you have called it Robin Hood, by returning money to the state because we are overfunded because we have great properties in Galveston. INS is not subject to recapture. Only the MO side, only the side that is for our daily operations. So we have this great opportunity to take on some additional debt on the INS. We can take on $31 million debt. And as we utilize those monies, we can also recognize some efficiencies on the other side of the equation. For example, it will take about two and a half million dollars to outfit the entire school district in new LED light fixtures. LEDs are much easier to operate in terms of utility costs. It helps with electric electricity costs, but it also helps with costs as far as air conditioning and air quality. The monies that we save, and we figured that to be about $500,000 per year, will allow us to utilize those funds on our maintenance and operating side. So by being thoughtful and utilizing our interest in sinking funds in a very thoughtful and intentional way, we can save monies on our M&O side and that allows the board the flexibilities to make other decisions with those monies. An example that I've used from time to time is that of purchasing a school bus. A school bus cost $100,000 and yes, that is the going price for a school bus. If we purchase a school bus out of our general operating fund, our M&O side, those monies that we get each year, we would in essence have to raise approximately $150,000 because of the recapture that is due the state. But if we purchase that same $100,000 bus on the INS side, we only have to raise that $100,000 because we are not subject to recapture. So for a district like Galveston ISD, we need to make sure that we are maximizing those things that we can purchase on INS in order to find the efficiencies on the M&O side. We can only find monies through INS through the vote of our community. And that's why we have a bond election. As I mentioned before, there were lots of considerations that the Citizens Advisory Committee went through, but the number one the number one concern for both the Citizens Advisory Committee and our Strategic Plan Committee was the, to recruit and retain high quality teachers. The ability for us as a school district to meet the compensation levels that are across our county, that's an important consideration as we look for teachers to serve our students. That, in essence, is why we are looking for additional monies on INS. It's the efficiency that we can create in order to address that number one concern. Serving our students through the recruitment and retention of high quality teachers. This slide provides for you not only a graphic, but the numbers to show how Galveston ISD really has not increased our tax rate for over the last seven years. In fact, it's actually lowered. A couple of years ago, we were able to swap some INS and m and We were being very efficient in the use of the money that you've provided to us. And we were able to take advantage of what we call golden pennies on the m and side. And those are six pennies that are not subject to recapture. Unfortunately, the state limits it, limits us at those six pennies. And so we wanted to make sure that we took advantage of that. So thanks to previous organizations and leadership that did that for us. This slide illustrates the rate of INS taxes in our counties. We're actually looking at school districts in Galveston County and where their INS rate sits. The first thing I want you to notice is look way to the right. That is Galveston ISD, nine and a half cents. The tax rate for our taxpayers is $1.06 for M&O 
and six and nine and a half cents for INS for a total of one dollar fifteen and a half cents per one hundred dollar valuation. As I mentioned before, in order to incur debt or to have a bond election, we have to ask our community. Notice all the other school districts in Galveston County that have gone to their communities to ask for support in creating debt or creating a bond election so that they could have capital needs met. Dickinson ISD, for example, 48 cents of their tax rate goes towards their interest in sinking payment, their debt payment. Just for your information, the state of Texas actually limits all school districts at 50%. So they're basically at their cap. The other districts, as you see there, um, have differing levels of their INS rate, with again Galveston being the lowest. At the bottom of this slide, you're actually going to see the total tax rate for each of these school districts. Dickinson at $1.52, Santa Fe $1.40 plus a little, Clear Creek ISD $1.40, Texas City $1.43, Friendswood at $1.36.7, and Galveston ISD the lowest in the county of these schools that are represented at $1.15 and a half. We are asking again at this time for $31 million on our INS, means we need your support from the community, and we are asking for no tax rate increase. So yes, it's a repeat. I just said it in the last slide. No tax rate increase for Galveston ISD taxpayers. The current rate, $1.15 and a half. The tax rate with the approved bond 2018, $1.15 and a half. Voting happens fairly quickly. May election, May 5th, Saturday, May 5th, is the election for a variety of things in Galveston County, but in my opinion, most importantly, the Galveston ISD bond 2018 election. There are opportunities for early voting, and you have until April 5th to register for this specific election. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen about Galveston ISD Bond 2018. We're excited about the opportunity and want to be able to share more with you. You can get more information on the GISD website and we are happy to answer any questions you have. Don't forget to vote May 5th, 2018.